Alright guys, welcome back in and today we're going to be touching base on DraftKings stock. This is one of our most traded stocks here on the channel and one that I personally have a long term position in. So again guys, today we're going to be talking about not only the long term vision on DraftKings, but in the short term, how is this short selling report going to affect the stock and the company and what do I see happening over the next few days. But in order to start to get an idea of how this short seller report will be impacting DraftKings, we not only have to take a look at news and the charts but also let's hear what Jim Cramer from CNBC has to say about this event because he really does have a good perspective on how this could affect the company short and long term. Did you look at DraftKings by the way since we talked about it yesterday? Yeah well, right I mean we had the Hindenburg report and then we had another report that Kathy Wood bought 900,000 shares. 42 million dollars worth. How many divisions? Not Hindenburg insignificant. Have? You know with Hindenburg this is I think I mean, look, again, I work for Jeff Kings. Uh, I, I think Jason Robinson runs an outfit where he literally could take this one division and just sell it to somebody for a dollar. And then Hindenburg, this ST division, and then Hindenburg would have to say, you know what? No harm, no foul. Stock goes hard. Now, in this clip, Kramer is attacking the validity of the report, and he is really saying that with DraftKings as a company, leaving this one division, this one problematic division, which is the division that Hindenburg is claiming to have some sort of black pool or black market activity, if they were really having this black market activity, DraftKings as a company could just drop this division in a single day with a matter of just a snap of a finger. So if you are a long-term investor on DraftKings and thinking that this could be something potentially dangerous for the stock going forward it really does not seem that way and it seems like DraftKings as a company could really wash this off their slate in just a matter of mere hours if it really was a real problem oh yeah all Jason has to do is get rid of that one division of which he could he doesn't need it. it's eight percent of the revenue but let's just take the move that that Kathy Wood made for, take take the take the story itself out of the picture in terms of what drove DraftKings down Let's just say a number, you know, a number of those ARC stocks go down. Did Kathy Wood, is that the right playbook? I think that what matters with DraftKings is gambling, whether more people will gamble and whether they have a low cost of acquisition. That's what matters, not this division that they can get rid of tomorrow. So Kathy Wood, I think, ultimately is going to be right. If you have a look, if you have an NFL season where more people want to gamble, do you think we're going to remember this little division that's 8% of their business? No. No, legal gambling is one of the most important trends in the country. So as you can see, everybody is pretty much staying solid with their DraftKings position. Jim Cramer still loves DraftKings, still thinks it is going to rise, and doesn't see this report really affecting the company in the short term, along with Kathy Woods also adding to her position almost $42 million in shares. So going forward here, I want to show you guys a few technical reasons why we should or shouldn't buy DraftKings this week, and really based on the chart, what I'm going to be doing in the future, short and long term. And usually, guys, I do love to make a lot of options plays. So if you haven't checked out the free disc Discord link down below in the description. Make sure you check that out because it's absolutely free to join and that's where I'll have all my plays and signals when I do jump in and jump out. So if you enjoy the videos and want to know when I'm actually going to be buying DraftKings or selling them, make sure you check that out down below. Now looking at the chart here for DraftKings, it's going to be absolutely crucial as I always tell you guys to find the tops and bottoms of the trend where we can reliably step in or step out of our position with DraftKings. And here over the last few months, it has been very obvious that we were in an upwards trading channel. So you can see that DraftKings has consistently been respecting this top right here and this bottom right here until we fell out of the channel back on May the 6th. So since then, DraftKings has been trying to find a new level here of support and resistance. And that's gonna be the key to going into DraftKings here here as an investor, we need to know what to look at and whether or not we should buy in at these levels. So it's going to be critical to again identify the support and the resistance levels. Now, after looking at this chart, it is very obvious to me that DraftKings has consistently found support around this $38 to $40 range. And you can see that when we did have that big crash all the way back in October, when the channel was just starting out, we were also seeing a support around $38. So consistently, even in the worst of times, 
times this has been a level to watch and you can see that this sell-off right here was very quick and sudden similarly to how the sell-off was a couple of months ago when we did crash from around 70 to 38 so again guys we have had some downwards pressure in the past with this stock but as you can see it has been a consistent recovery since then and that's one of the things that i most like about this company consistently looks like they have a support level around 40 dollars but over the next few days what's going to be extremely important is knowing whether or not they will be breaking their resistance so again the resistance is the line that trends in the ups Side. So what I mean by that is this pink line that I'm putting on the chart and essentially you can see that DraftKings has been continuously breaking down along this line over the last few months and that's why it really becomes so important to see these trends on the chart because with DraftKings setting up this cone shape this could be a massive opportunity to catch a breakout with this stock. So what exactly do I think will be happening with DraftKings over the next few days? Well as you can see we are clearly setting up that cone shape there on the chart so it wouldn't surprise me if we got one more small breakdown or another trend here all the way to the tip of the triangle and then immediately following there's only two things that could really happen either we're going to be breaking back up to the top of this channel or sorry the bottom side at around $58 a share or potentially the second thing that could happen is a trend here in the triangle and then a break to the downside. Now looking at the trend, you can see that we already had a lot of pushing to the downside and when we did reach this bottom point, there was an increase in volume representing people stepping in on the stock and really creating a new support. So again, that's why Kathy Woods is so critical here for going forward with DraftKings stock. When she bought these shares, you can see that clearly when we look at these bottoms on the bottom of the chart, or sorry, these lines, these indicate volume or how many shares were traded that day. And it's so, so high here on the volume chart that we can't even see it because the trend is blocking it. So again, if you see this line right here, this was a massive day when Kathy Woods bought almost $42 million worth of shares. And after that day, we did see a sell-off but you can see that we have been holding that price and that's usually what happens when stocks collapse to a certain price multiple times and then are able to find buying consistently. So if I was trading DraftKings stock over the next few days, I would ultimately wait to see what direction this pattern is going to be breaking in. But once I do get that confirmation of either a break to the upside or a break to the downside, I will be looking to massively trade DraftKings in my free Discord for an options play all the way up to around $57 a share. So again, guys, that is my price target on DraftKings if we get a break to the upside. Absolutely a great opportunity to trade them here in the short term, but also to set up a longer term position in case we come back into this increasing channel. But if we do see a break to the downside, then ultimately I will look more to add in my long term position or my long term portfolio versus having options as there's a lot more volatility here with DraftKings to the downside. You can see that it gets a a lot more quick and a lot more heavy with the volatility when the stock is selling off so I will be avoiding trading that but anyways guys I hope you enjoyed the video there will be a lot more coming next week as there are some great opportunities setting up here similarly to DraftKings there are a lot more wedge patterns ready to break so a lot of your favorite names will be on the channel this week again make sure you stay tuned if you are not subscribed already check that link out down below in the description and hit the subscribe button but as always guys I hope all your plays are in the green.